Good morning. Um, thank you for the introduction and thanks for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I will first introduce to you our team in Nijmegen, or New Orleans partly now. Um, Eva and Dirk, you already know, they're here as well. Um, it's a bit dark, but um, I have a few PhD, um, other PhD students working with me on CDG as well. Uh, Professor Ron Wavers, you see up there. No, that I Yes, there. And uh, Samira, one of the students who w worked really hard on the project I'm going to tell you about now. Uh, all our colleagues in the lab um, working for Derek on uh, CDG every day. To give you an introduction, um, we all know that CDGs are clinically very um, heterogeneous group of disorders. Um, and unfortunately, we don't always know what the natural course is. Um, in some subtypes, we only have small numbers of patients. Then it's even harder, uh, extremely hard. Um, and also, they're living in different countries, being seen by different clinicians, and we all have our own ways of um, assessing patients. Um, so we would like to make it more, uh, more a general approach. Um, and how do we assess the current clinical status of, of the patients, um, good days, bad days, uh, US parents all know, um, yeah, that some days are better than other days, and um, it depends on which day the patient is seen by the doctor as well, um, and in which um, phase of life, um, early infants or more um, older, like the patients you see here. Um, pa the three patients in the all have the same subtype of CDG, but are clinically very, um, some are very mild, others are very severe. Um, and here you see a collection of other CDG subtypes. Um, and also a big point is um, treatment, or should I say cure, curable. Um, in the hope, we hope, I hope, you hope, uh, that we will be able to cure more subtypes of CDG. But a crucial point will be, how will we monitor the treatment? Is it working? Is a patient actually benefiting, or is it just coincidence? Um, it might be that one patient uh, seems to be improving, while the other patient seems to be deteriorating. So we will need to come up with a way um, to objectively uh, monitor treatment, um, to know how a, if a therapy is working and um, if we should continue with it. So why would we need a scoring tool? Except, uh, yeah, like I just said, for monitoring treatment effects, uh, but also to compare patients, um, to see how in the same patient group, with patients with the same subtypes, um, how, uh, how they spread. Um, but also to monitor the natural course and the degree of severity and the burden of disability. So we, then we thought, what should we do? Make a whole new score or use an existing one? Or is there an existing one that could be applicable for CDG? Um, and we thought about it. And we came up with, then we thought it was a, yeah, we still think it's a good idea, the Newcastle Pediatric Mitochondrial Disease Rating Scale, which already was an existing tool validated to use in uh, patients with mitochondrial disorders. Um, and we chose for this scale because mitochondrial disorders have, um, yeah, they look like CDGs in, in, in many different ways. Uh, one would be um, that they're also multi-system disorders affecting many different organs. Patients can be mildly to severely affected. Um, and there are several overlapping clinical features with CDG. So that's why we thought that would be a good skill to try and make it applicable for CDG. Um, and here you see a progression score of one patient where you can see um, in a blink of an eye from birth one year to 11 years, um, moments where the patients get from mild to moderate or moderate to severe, but also improvement where um, you see that some of the symptoms um, have declined in the patient and the patient actually doing better. So we have adjusted adjusted the Newcastle Pediatric Mitochondrial Disease Rating Scale for CDG. So um, the same as uh, uh, that scale, we use three age ranges because, um, because a baby of two to three months 
uh, you cannot use the same scale as an 18 year old um, almost ad adult so we um, use the same three age uh, ranges up to 24 months 2 to 11 years 12 to 18 years uh, we gathered all the, all the information on the biochemical and genetical background of the patients um, documented those um, and used three domains um, the first domain is the general function um, Herefor we use anamnestic data so we asked the parents how uh, in the last six months uh, how did your child do um, on, on different subjects different symptoms um, section two involves the organs um, which organ systems are involved uh, um, with the seizures I will go to the scale with you um, afterwards and section three would be the current clinical assessment that's wh that's where the doctor comes in and that's just um, when a patient normally goes to visit the clinician, they will do a physical checkup and they would write all those information down in the chart. Now we ask them to fill in uh, the scale as well and ask afterwards how did you, um, how did it go? Did it cost you too much extra time? Um, I will come back to that later as well. So this is section one. Um, this is the questions we ask the parents. How is the vision? Um, the hearing, the communication with your child, the feeding, and every um, symptom is scored z zero points to three points, zero being normal, absolutely no limitations, to three being severe, uh, in the case of vision, even no response to light. And, and that's how we scored every, um, those four symptoms. Um, Self-care, mobility, and educational achievement. How's the child doing at school? Is there any progression? Um, that's the that's section one. Section two involved all the different organ systems. So CNS, central nervous system, we would ask, um, had, have your child has any seizures in the last couple of six months? Were there any bleedings of, or thrombosis like you just heard? That can be a big problem in patients with CDG. Uh, gastrointestinal function, vomiting, um, symptoms, um, endocrine function, hormones, uh, breathing. Um, so we would ask the parents all these questions and document that and score them in the same way I just showed you. Uh, section three is the current clinical assessment. So how's the growth, uh, height, weight uh, over the preceding six months? Um, again, normal to severe. Um, and then we made a developmental uh, diagram. So here you start, is development age appropriate? Yes, you get zero points, so that would add to the total score. Um, if not, has the child regressed in any area, and regression being um, loss of functions that the child had previously, so being able to walk on one point, and then the next six months losing that ability, um, that would be regression. If so, that would lead to the highest score. Um, so you get a, um, a global idea of the development of the, of the last six months and get a score for that. Um, furthermore, we should, you can ask the parents, of course, how's the vision and the hearing, but you should also check that um, when in clinics. Uh, so the doctor would also check vision. Uh, strabismus, as you just heard, is very, can be very prevalent in patients with CDG. Uh, and eye movements, those are also assessed. Myopathy, involvement of muscles, uh, muscle strength, um, and ataxia. I won't go into that anymore because we just heard all about these symptoms. Um, and additional three extra um, neurological symptoms as well. Um, and that will add up to a total score, um, 0 to 14 being mild, 15 to 25 being moderate, and over 26 being severe. So we developed uh, the, the tool, the scoring tool, and then we had to validate it, so see in practice if it actually works. So we did an experiment. Uh, we uh, had 12 CDG patients uh, and four investigators, and we had four investigators see all the 12 patients, uh, some on the same day, some in the same week, but in the same hospital, and um, ask them to score the patient, um, and then see how they did, uh, how every investigator scored each patient. Additionally, uh, Eva showed a video of two patients on um, an EMG meeting where all well, professionals in the field were, 
and uh, she asked them, nine of them, to look at the two videos and score um, all the symptoms they could see and ask her all the questions they would normally ask the parents. So give, uh, uh, give the patient history and, and how they're doing and also biochemical uh, information. Um, and then we took all the scores uh, and used statistical analysis to see um, how, how the scores were uh, relatable by each in investigator. So this is our total patient group. These are um, all CDG patients with different subtypes of CDG. Some not even, that we don't even know the diagnosis yet completely. Um, ranging from 10 months to 19 years. Um, and this is the scores they had, these are the scores they had for section one, two and three. So we were very surprised and happy to see that there was actually high agreement among the raters. So this is an example of the total score. A, B, C, D are uh, the four investigators, and here you see all the patients. So let's, if we take this patient, you see that the total score was given 24 by, by uh, investigator A, but also by all the others. So they came up, they came up with the same total score. Uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes you see uh, variations like this patient, 17, but 19 by uh, investigator B and D, and 17 by C and A. So there are, there's still a two-point um, difference. Uh, but overall, we saw that this was um, high agreement among the raters and no significant differences between the, sub between the scores. Um, if you look at strabismus, um, you see that there are slight variations, but again, high agreement among uh, all the investigators. And um, also, it has to do with the symptom, obviously, because strabismus is easy to, um, easy to see. Um, so again, minimal variation between investigators. And we also looked at what symptoms were difficult to, uh, to score, actually, and the biggest one was myopathy. Um, I think in partly that's because of uh, myopathy can be very um, variable in the same patient. So if investigator B saw the patient on a different day, it could be that the myopathy is more um, severe on that day or more um, patient is more tired. So uh, there was great variation, but we did notice that that's comparable with mitochondrial patients as well. Um, since the initial score was uh, applicable for mitochondrial disease, um, there were no differences between CDG and mitochondrial patients. So it's not harder to score myopathy in CDG patients than it is in mitochondrial patients. So our conclusions were that there was good interreliability, inter so the investigators agreed on um, um, on the scores, the subscores and the total scores uh, in the patients. Uh, there were minimal variations in the total score per patient. Um, the sim sy symptom assessment reliability was also very high, uh, minimal variability, and some symptoms are more easy to score than others. Um, it's a simple tool, quick to use. Uh, we asked the doctors how long it took them to fill in the score, and it was approximately 15 minutes, so that's, that's doable. Um, registration is easy, you can just circle um, the scores and then add up and fill in. Um, it requires no extra tests, no extra uh, things you have to do as a clinician um, before you fill in the score. So in our, we would recommend to use it, um, especially if you want to try treatment or treatment course, but also every six months to a year for every patient just to see how your patient is doing and uh, using the tool will require you to check every symptom um, and over and over again so you will have a good uh, view of progression um, and how your patient is doing. I'd like to acknowledge all the um, co-workers who helped us validate the tool um, in many different centers around the world um, and I want to thank you all for listening and thank the organization for having us and organizing this meeting. Thank you very much.